is our Father, our Mother too. God is our dearest treasure. God's ever near, the one friend who loves us without any measure. Of his dreams our love was made, only from him is love repaid. Let us in gladness all live for him, serve him in every season, serve him with thought, with hand and limb, love him without any Awaken him. How will he find us when he comes? Awake and ready. And when he asks us to dedicate our lives ever more perfectly to him, how will he find us? Awake and ready. Divine Mother. Divine Mother. Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. Friend, beloved God. Friend, beloved God. Great Masters. Great Masters. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Baba Ji Krishna. Baba Ji Krishna. The Hiri Mahashaya. The Hiri Mahashaya. Swami Sri Uteshwar. Swami Sri Uteshwar. Paramahansa Yogananda. Paramahansa Yogananda. Saints of all religions. Saints of all religions. With deep love. With deep love. We humbly invoke your presence. We humbly invoke your presence. Come into the temple of our hearts. Come into the temple of our hearts. And reign with your divine love. And reign with your divine love. Come into the temple of our minds. Come into the temple of our minds. And reign with your crystal clarity. And reign with your crystal clarity. And come into the temple of our souls. And come into the temple of our souls. And reign with your divine bliss. And reign with your divine bliss. So we may share your spirit. So we may share your spirit. With all. With all. Om. Peace. Peace. Amen. Amen. Please have a seat. Keep me not. 
not bound here, teach me to fly. Far from earth's madness, free ere I die. Keep me not bound, no, teach me to fly. Farther away than the stars. There's nothing confuse progress with movement and with outward change. Thus, the more dust of excitement they can stir up, the more productive they feel they are. The more they get swept up into a happy mood when things go well, the better they imagine things have gone. And their answer to every slump is to cast about for some other thing to sweep them high once more. Such lives are like cars driven over deeply rutted roads. Their movement is almost as much up and down as it is forward. With even-mindedness, progress is a straight, not a jagged line. Progress, however, should mean above all progressive understanding. Even-mindedness bestows clarity of perception, which is the ability to see things as they really are undistorted by emotional bias. And now let's affirm together first in a strong voice, grabbing the attention of the conscious mind, I remain untouched by gain or loss. I remain untouched by gain or loss. In the calm mirror of my understanding. In the calm mirror of my understanding. I behold thy light reflected. I behold thy light reflected. And now in a regular speaking voice, I remain untouched by gain or loss. I remain untouched by gain or loss. In the calm mirror of my understanding. In the calm mirror of my understanding. I behold thy light reflected. I behold thy light reflected. And now in a whisper, with even deeper focus and concentration, I remain untouched by gain or loss. I remain untouched by gain or loss. In the calm mirror of my understanding, in the calm mirror of my understanding. I behold thy light reflected. And now silently broadcasting it with the deepest focus at the point between the eyebrows. I remain untouched by gain or loss. In the calm mirror of my understanding, I behold thy light reflected. And please pray silently with me. When I rejoice, Lord, let it be with thee. And when I grieve, Help me always to see thy sunlight through the mists. Om. Peace. Amen. Good morning, friends. Welcome morning. to Sunday service. My name is Dharma Devi. For any new people visiting or those joining us online, and this is Narayan. And I'd like to read to you from Rays of the One Light, Weekly Commentaries on the Bible and Bhagavad Gita by Swami Kriyananda. This week's topic, what is the best way to pray? Truth is one and eternal. Realize oneness with it in your deathless self within. 
The following commentary is based on the teachings of Paramahansa Yogananda. Jesus Christ and Sri Krishna both advised praying to God as personal, yet both emphasized also that God is above form and that he must be sought ultimately in infinity. As Jesus put it, God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Yet he spoke of God constantly as our Heavenly Father. In what is known as the Lord's Prayer, he proposed a very human prayer to the Heavenly Father, asking fulfillment for all our spiritual needs. The Bhagavad Gita explains that man, living as he does in a human body, finds it difficult to worship infinity as though the ego and body didn't even exist. Far better for human beings, Krishna says to work with reality as we know it than to affirm a reality of which the human mind is incapable of forming any clear notion. Encouraging the devotee in this direction, he says, O Arjuna, be thou a yogi. That is to say, be one who works with not in rejection of the energies of the body and the natural tendencies of the mind. In the 12th chapter of the Gita, Arjuna asks, those who ever steadfast worship thee as devotees, that is to say, in an I and thou relationship, and those who contemplate thee as the immortal unmanifested spirit, which group is better versed in yoga? The blessed Lord replied, those who, fixing their minds on me, adore me, ever united to me through supreme devotion, are in my eyes the perfect knowers of yoga. Those whose strict aim is union with the unmanifested choose a more difficult way. Arduous for embodied beings is the path of dedication to the absolute the path, that is to say, of jnana yoga. Thus, through Holy Scripture, God has spoken to mankind. such a, a beautiful celebration of Diwali. Ram sang the beautiful song of Ram and Sita. It was so blissful. You know what I, I realized from that experience is we enter into a, a realm. It's like going on an eternal pilgrimage. You know, when you enter into those kind of evenings together, it's not, it's bhakti teaching. You know, it's the teaching from the heart. Uh, storytelling and chanting and meditation is about your own personal experience of God. That's actually the topic of the services today. But that just entering into that space, giving ourselves that space, entering into that space, it was so beautiful. It was so inspiring. And I found myself at the end when we had done all of that uh, work, so to speak, but it wasn't work, it was the, the joy of that pilgrimage, that the meditation, right, just kind of happens of its own accord. And that's, that's the, the blessing of, that's the blessing of India, isn't it? What, what a, a culture of people, not a place, the ancient name for India was Bharata, right, the land of light, mm. the festival of light. And why is it that these epics go or have carried out through millennia, have sustained themselves? The Ramayana, which we celebrated last night, the Mahabharata, right? The two greatest epics and uh, perhaps the two oldest epics in history. Why is that? 
I, I think it's because of the power of the natural narrative of the soul. You know how every week we all are familiar, most of us, with the, the festival of light. And, you know, even if you're a bird lover, you can think, oh God, here we go again, <laughs> right? We're doing this story. But why, why is that story, why is it so compelling in the festival? Why is the hero's journey so compelling? Why do they keep coming out with another Rocky movie? <laughs> And then they start Creed. Oh my God, it's, it's so bad. And yet I watched one. <laughs> Why is it? It's because there's something eternal there. There is, there is an eternal drive of the soul. But the Indian culture, you see, sustains it with the beauty of how we relate to life. And we are people. We can't go from oatmeal to omnipresence. Right? It's, a, it's a big leap of faith. We, we connect, people connect with people. And so you have a, a heart and soul resonance. Resonance. Maybe with Yogananda, right? Or with this lineage, or with Krishna, or Babaji, or Jesus Christ, or who, whatever saint. It doesn't have to be from this lineage. Any saint, the Buddha, anyone, any saint that you feel drawn to, you, have, you resonate with them with them and it's they awaken you right to your potential but it's in in the valley of sorrow a thousand years or till tomorrow but i think just of you 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 just you see we think of of god but we relate to god in a form and god is both form and formless but it's that form of god that can help take us to the formless presence of god isn't it? It's one of Yogananda's other chants. The, the philosophy, all the teachings, you know, are in song. One of uh, Dharmadasa Nirmala's albums, they called them Philosophy in Song mm -hmm. and shared Swamiji's music. But the chant I was thinking of, some of you know it, we have done it here, one of Yogananda's chants. I can't think of the name of it, but uh, O Thou King of the Infinite. Oh. Uh -oh. O thou king of the infinite, uh, I behold thee in samadhi, in joy and in more joy, in thy light of mellow joy. You see, you behold a saint. That's why in India they say too that one moment in the presence of a saint can be your raft over the ocean of delusion. It's just if you have one moment of openness, of receptivity to a sat guru to a god realized saint and master just that one moment can be enough and you say you you may have had that moment before and i dare say that you have like yogananda said in his poem about his guru we met here because we met before how could we feel so close how could we feel so connected in the spirit of god it is because we have done this before. <coughs> Let me start. <laughs> With the, the whispers from eternity <coughs> entering into that, that pilgrimage. Yeah, it's funny, I opened up the whispers this morning as we were celebrating Diwali last night, and this is the one I turned to. Demand for seeing the one fire beneath all soul flames. O eternal fire, thou art the little soul flames rising through the burner of cosmic manifestation. Each human being is but one flame, separate seeming from all others, and also from thy universal source of power. Thou dost appear many, finite, limited, small, or large, but ever divided, shooting up as separate entities through the pores of living organisms. But thou alone art that one eternal flame. All things other, 
are but thy multifarious appearances. Forgive me, but that thou art that one immortal flame that reminds me of that really bad pop song. I forget who those women were. Is this burning an eternal flame? Right? And talking about uh, the love of a relationship. But that's actually just what I was sharing before. It is. It, that was why I asked Dharma Devi to do that chant in the Valley of Sorrow today. It's it, to me, it's so moving. My, it, because it's so it's it's real to our experience of life. We've all experienced suffering and sorrow. We've all gotten to the point where, like a, a match fighter, you know, you, you tap out and you're you're done with this world in a sense. But it's not enough to have just that. And that the negative uh, impulse to, you know, run away. It's not a running away. Then we begin to realize it's a running towards. You see, and that's the second part of that chant. Just for you, 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 just you. How incredible it is that the saints, they have this burning desire for God. I have been inspired a lot recently. Maybe it's because we were in Italy over the summer of the, the Sacred Heart. You know, this image of Jesus Christ, or some of you f familiar with the Immaculate Heart of Mary. And I, I grew up Catholic, and I, I went and played sports against these different other Catholic schools, IHM, Immaculate Heart of Mary, and the Sacred I never even thought about what that meant. But I, I've been <laughs> meditating on it more and that the sacred heart of Christ and the sacred heart of the masters of the avatar is they have it like the cross you could think of the cross that yogananda said the vertical line of the cross is your relationship with god it's your it's, it represents the infinite right it represents your spine that this line going up and then he said the horizontal line of the cross represents finite. So you have infinite and finite. And where is, where is the cross section? It's right in the heart. And interestingly, right, that the hands represent the heart center. So the heart, though, of us, normally when we're caught in delusion, right, it's vexated. It's, uh, it's committed. It's in one direction or the other. It's distorted by emotional bias. But the heart of the masters, the heart of the avatars, is it's it's burning. But for you, you, you. You see what I mean? It's both ways. It, they have a burning desire for God. And it's also like in the festival. Every week we share that line. Many of you will remember it. Greater can no love be than this from a life of infinite joy and freedom in God, willingly to embrace limitation, pain, and death for the salvation of mankind. I'm beginning to realize, wow, that, that is the sacred heart. But we can't have that kind of heartthrob, that kind of uh, divine inclusion, that kind of all-embracing love and attitude until we get our vertical line until we first commune with God. All right, that's why Jesus Christ is saying here to us today that God is a spirit and he must be worshiped in spirit and in truth. Well, have you ever thought about what is the spirit of God? What is spirit? What is God? What is the spirit of God? Sat, chit, ananda, ever existing, ever conscious, ever new joy. That is the spirit of God. And because we're manifestations, because we come from God, God in a very real sense has become us, that joy is our native food. If ananda Moy Ma used to say that, that the native food of the mind is joy. 
Yeah, that's what we're really wanting to munch on, right? Not that we, we don't want the Pringles. What we're always searching for is the joy of God. But we just we just took a, a bypass. We just like, oh, we took that exit. No, that's the wrong way. My late father, God rest his soul. You know, it's that some sage, he would pull out like sage counsel every once in a while, and you would want to jot it down. But anytime we would do something stupid growing up, mm -hmm. he would always say, son, you can always self-correct. There's <laughs> a lot of wisdom in that. <laughs> you know, you know, we're just like, oh, yeah, yeah, this is it, this is it, boom! And right, you, you just run into a brick wall. You can always self-correct. Right? And the self-correction, remember, is in the self. That's what Christ is saying, in spirit and in truth. But we, we, it would help us to get really clear on what that goal is. There's another saying in the Gita. It's one of my personal favorites. And the way Yogananda translated it, the spirit of God, that end goal, what it's like. Very simple. Having that which no other game is greater. Mm -hmm. Think about that. Having that which no other gain is greater. You see, when you have that, when you have God, when you have the Spirit of God, when you have the effulgence of God, when you have the light of God, the love of God, the joy of God, when it permeates your being, you realize that it is it's that light, it's that energy, it's that intelligence that is directing everything, not just you, but all life. And the more in tune you are, the more you can smile. <laughs> the more out of tune with that, you, you get a little sour, and you get all you get upset because this person didn't do it that way, that person didn't do it this way, right? And we put our conditions on life. But the more we get into that stream of that consciousness, and we realize this is what we're we're, we're going for. It's the get out of jail free card. Having that which no other gain is greater. It's a, meditate on that. Ta I encourage you, take it into your meditation. That this is why I'm meditating. This is why I practice my sadhana every day. This is why I serve others selflessly. Because I know that the transmutation of the ego, the overcoming of ego consciousness, that delusion, which is just a distortion of my soul, it will bring me to having that which no other gain is greater. It's the greatest gain of all because it's that same energy that will give us, that will lead us. That's why Yogananda said, go into your meditation first, right? And feel that communion with God and then affirm and that with that super conscious conviction, I and my Father are one. Feel that connection. Feel that conviction in your being. And then ask the Father. Then He will give you health, prosperity, success, whatever you need. He knows better. Or do we know better? No. I think He knows better. <laughs> I think He knows better. And that is why when we can get into that stream of the divine, it... it the details don't matter as much. If This is one of the hallmarks, too, of this new age of energy, that if we can feel the divine flow of inspiration, that the details will work themselves out. Yes, we still have to be responsible and take care of our lives and use common sense. I was having a conversation with a friend the other day. And Master Yoganandaji said, right, intuition is both pure feeling and pure reason. So you can use sweet reason. You can feel, yes, of course. But you have to watch that you don't believe everything you think. <laughs> like that, that uh, bumper sticker said that we saw one day. You know, because your mind will just try, will trick you. That's why you first seek God, first attune yourself to the divine consciousness, and then call on that presence. I'm going out today. I will reason. I, I will will. I will act. You have given me these God-given gifts, but you guide them. 
Mother. You guide them, Father. You guide me, Guru. You guide me to the right path and everything. We have to use our talents, use our gifts in the way that God wants us to. And we can't always see what that is, but we can get familiar with that attunement with the divine the spirit of God, a feeling of calmness, a feeling of inner freedom, a feeling of joy. And when we expand our consciousness, the little things, right, they don't, it's like that story of the Buddha. Do you remember that somebody stabbed the Buddha and, and then his body just began, began to expand? and got larger mm -hmm. and larger and larger until he was like a buffalo moose Buddha. <laughs> and then that the, the knife was just like a little toothpick. <laughs> you see, it was insignificant. These stories are to remind us that when our love of God is so deep, it's so profound, it's so strong, that all those other things, they don't matter. I want to close with an inspiring story of Peter's father. And Peter could tell it better than I, and he can share it with you afterwards as well. But Peter's dad, and Peter won't say this, but I will, his dad was a saint. He was a great soul. I knew him, and I had the, the privilege of being his friend. And in fact, uh, Tim was his name, Tim Kretzman. Tim and I were in a play that Swami Kriyananda wrote called The Jewel and the Lotus. And I played the part of Narayan. Mm. <laughs> That's how I got my name, but I'm not going to tell you that story. <laughs> but the story of Tim is that Tim was at the end of his life and he was battling cancer. And he was in intense pain. And he had received this uh, mantra of Rama since we were celebrating Diwali last night, of Lord Rama. And he just started chanting this mantra of Rama. And it, it just, it grew in its intensity and in his fervor and his concentration. And Peter was there. And he turned to Peter, and then Peter could see that his pain subsided, and then he was in a state of bliss. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he said to Peter, that you see, when you're small, pain is large mm -hmm. and feels overwhelming. But when you're big, it's nothing at all. So let's go big and go home. <laughs> <laughs>